So I posted about this on uh, Instagram and Twitter and that. It's uh, an adapter for my miter saw. This original piece goes on the back port there. Um, and originally this had a bag that you could attach to it to help collect the dust. And while this end does accept a two and a half inch shot back hose, that's not what I have uh, to hook up to, to it. And I tried a little bit to find, this is just a, an adapter kit that I just, I just grabbed it from Home Depot, hoping that something in there would, um, I think there's one other piece that went with this, but anyway, uh, but nothing in that worked. And just searching around online, I couldn't find anything that worked. So I decided uh, finally to just draw up in Fusion 360 an adapter uh, to go between uh, this, this fitting and the hose. And so that just fits in there like that. And then that guy fits in there like that. And then this attaches to the uh, miter saw. So I'm gonna go over, um, I'm not a Fusion expert, Fusion 360 expert, but I'm gonna go over um, how I drew this up. Um, just if nothing else to show that even if you are fumbling your way through Fusion 360, which is a beast of a program uh, and could be intimidating and um, sometimes even difficult uh, to get your head around, at least for me. Uh, but even if you're just fumbling your way through, you can actually make a functional uh, part. Um, and that's um, that's where I land on the, on the in the 3D printing world is I like I like functional things, um, especially when you make something that you otherwise really can't buy. I mean, I couldn't find anything to uh, to actually make this work. So just a couple of quick things before we jump into Fusion. The inside diameter of this fitting is 58 millimeters, and I just used some calipers to get that measurement. And it actually ends up being 57, I'm getting, depending on where I'm at in there, 57.82 there. Rounded that up to 58 because I wanted it to be a nice uh, tight fit. And the hose here is 48. And the nice thing about the hose is it's squishy. Um, so you, it gives you some, some playing room. So I just measured that out. And again, that's 39.37 right there. So I just rounded that up to 40 so that we get a nice, uh, nice tight fit. That's not going to come off very easily. And then this is a nice tight fit. And actually I can uh, push that on more. If I wasn't behind the camera, it'd be easier, but I could just push that on more to get a nice tight fit. And then, and then that end goes on the saw. So um, those are the, basically the two measurements, uh, the only two measurements that you need the inside diameter of that one and the inside diameter of that hose to make the adapter. So uh, let's jump over to Fusion and I'll show you how I um, fumbled my way through drawing this up. Okay, here we are in Fusion 360 and this is the original drawing of the hose adapter couple things. One is, again, this is not going to be a definitive master tutorial in uh, Fusion 360. This is going to be me showing how even the, with a limited set of knowledge, uh, just basic uh, knowledge in Fusion, you can get to something that is useful and functional. Um, if you want a complete set of beginner tutorials for Fusion, then I'm going to have a link in the description to a, a set of tutorials by Lars Christensen. He's a Fusion master, and he has a set of tutorials for Fusion beginners. And of course, there's lots of others out there on YouTube. Um, but his are, are what I used to actually sort of bootstrap my knowledge in Fusion. And I highly suggest that you uh, run through those tutorials. Um, they're, they're excellent. Um, but this is just to show that even with a basic basic knowledge, you can get to something functional and just sort of show how, how I did this. Um, I've already realized as I was drawing this and thinking about it that there is a there's a simpler way, probably a faster way, uh, a way that makes more sense to draw this than the way I actually did it. But I'm going to show you the way I actually did it. So a couple things. One is we need to make sure that we're in millimeters because this is intended for 3D printing and 3D printers work in millimeters. So uh, over here in preferences, uh, on the right hand side, we're going to go to uh, default units and then a design. We're going to make sure that millimeters is selected. I 
think it either defaults to inches or feet. I don't actually remember what the default is, but just make sure that you're in millimeters. Otherwise, uh, if you're intending to 3D print something, uh, it won't uh, won't be right. Um, and uh, the other thing is is to what I've been doing here, orbiting around. To do that, you shift. Uh, on the keyboard and then click and hold the center mouse button or the center wheel and then you move the mouse around and you can order it around uh, the model. If you want to pan around the model like that uh, it's just click and hold the center uh, mouse button or the center uh, uh, wheel. So I'm going to make a new drawing here and then over here on the left I'm going to turn on the origin and again, I'm not going to get any of the terminology necessarily correct or anything, um, and I'm not going to be like super basic. So on this f uh, f uh, bottom uh, plane right here, I'm going to right click, and I'm going to select Create Sketch. And then on the keyboard, I'm going to hit C for Circle. Okay, and that's going to you, you notice that the cursor changed a little bit there. On the sketch palette here, I want to make sure that center diameter circle is selected. And then on the center point here, the, it'll sort of snap when you get to that. Uh, I'm going to click and drag. Just click. You don't have to hold. Now, I'm going to start with the uh, miter saw side of the adapter. So I know that that needs to be 58 millimeters. So I'm just going to, you could drag out to try and get it, but you can just type in 58 and then enter. Now I have a 58 millimeter circle. So the next step is to actually make this a, a cylinder type shape so we can end up with basically a pipe. So I'm going to hit Q on the keyboard for press and pull. I'm going to select this face, just click on it. And you can either drag up or you can type in the number just like we did when we were making the, the diameter for the circle. Um, I don't remember the exact number measurement of the original one. I'm just going to type in 50 here and hit enter. And so now we have our cylinder, um, but we need to make this a pipe. So in order to do that, I'm going to hit O on the keyboard, and that's uh, going to bring up the offset. And you could select either this face or this face. It really doesn't matter. I'm just going to click on that one. And then the next step when you're creating an offset is to click on an edge where you want the offset, to sort of basically the origin of the offset where you want it to start. Now we want this to be a pipe, so we need to make um, some walls, and basically the farther inside we go the thicker the walls are going to be. On the original one I believe I made them four millimeters um, which is probably a little thick for this purpose but that's what I had made them. Make sure you don't want to go out make sure uh, uh, you know you don't want to you don't want to go out on the offset you want to go in so that is a negative number so I'm going to do negative four and then I'm going to do Q on the keyboard and then I'm going to select this inner circle and this is uh, you could either I'm going to orbit around here. If I pull this out, you can see that that's going to extend it. If I push it in, you can see it's going to go inside and then end up coming out uh, the other side. But what I want to do is I want to make sure that this just goes uh, all the way through the length of the cylinder and no further. So you could, you could just drag this out, and it does actually snap, but to make things super easy and more just exacting, I guess, to make sure they're exact, if on the extent over here, uh, if you select Object, and then you click on the opposite face, then it will extrude that uh, all the way through. If that doesn't look the same, if it looks odd, make sure that your operation over here uh, in the panel is set to Cut, because if you use Join or Intersect or any of these others, it won't uh, look correct and it won't be uh, correct. So we want to cut, because we want to cut that all the way through. And then once we hit OK, then we can see that we ended up with a pipe. So the next thing I want to do is I want to make the top half of the uh, of the vacuum uh, adapter of the of this adapter. And again, this may not be this order of operations here may not be uh, the best, uh, and what I'm doing may not be the best. But again, this is how I did it: it's fumbling through, getting to an end result. So I'm going to, on this bottom plane again, I'm going to hit right click there and select create sketch. C on the keyboard for circle. I'm going to go over the center point just like we did on the first one. And I'm going to pull it out. Now this is for the vacuum side. So I know that that needs to be 40 millimeters. So I'm just going to type 40 and enter. And then again on the keyboard, I'm going to hit Q and I'm going to select that face. And I'm going to orbit this up a little bit, and I'm going to come 
up. Now, again, this doesn't look right, but we'll fix it here. Now, I don't, again, I don't remember how long this actually was. I'm going to make this 50 just like the other one and hit enter. Um, again, this does not look correct. We need this to be above, just like if we look at the original, we need that to be above like that. So, in order to make that happen, I'm going to hit M on the keyboard for move. I'm going to go to the right to the center point of this uh, of this inner uh, cylinder. I'm going to click, and then on this up arrow, let me if I orient this differently, then you can see. So I'm going to so I'm pulling it up. Now I know that uh, this uh, cylinder, the outer cylinder, is 50 millimeters. So if I just type 50 and hit enter, now those two are even, and we're starting to look more like the adapter. So the next thing is I want to make this, um, uh, the hose side, an actual pipe. So we're going to do the same thing that we did for the other one. We're going to make an offset and then extrude it out. So I'm going to hit O on the keyboard for offset, select that face, select that outer edge, scroll in negative four to make the walls four millimeters thick, Q on the keyboard, select that face, orbit around so we can and, and drag and orbit so we can see this this other face on an extent I'm going to say two object click on that make sure we're on cut hit OK and there we go okay so here we are um, this is actually you know this is how again this is how I drew this so I'm drawing these two things and I'm like okay so this is basically close to what I'm picturing in my head except I need to figure out how to get this gap closed and I know that there's probably a million ways you could do this there's probably things uh, I know there's things that I could have done uh, before that would have made this a lot faster and perhaps easier but this is what I did so if you come over here on the left hand side where it says bodies and you tick that little triangle we have body one and body two and you can name these whatever you want but you can see that body two is the second one cylinder that we drew and body one is the first one so I'm gonna hide body two get out of my way and then I'm gonna right click on the bottom plane there and I'm going to hit create new sketch and then C for circle this is just like what we've done before and then I'm going to drag this out to this inner edge and that happens to be 50 millimeters and I'm going to click and then I'm going to do Q select that face and I'm going to um, I want to uh, uh, pull this up so that it's the same thickness as the walls because this is just going to be an inside you know, cap, I guess. So I want that to be four. Now in the operation, I want to make sure that I do new body and then hit OK. So now what we have there, and if I actually come over here and I hide body one, we have a, uh, little, a little cap. But it's also, it's on the bottom. So if I turn all these on, we can see that we still have the, the, the gap there. So I want to, I'm going to turn off uh, body two again, and then I'm going to do come up here, and I'm going to do modify, and then align, and I'm going to select that guy, and I'm going to select that guy, and then hit OK, and now it's moved to the top. Okay, so now we can see that we're even closer, except that we need a hole in there for this to actually function in any meaningful way. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hide body two. I'm going to right click on that face, I'm going to select uh, create sketch, and then I'm going to do C for circle. And I know that that's, that first cylinder, that's, that smaller cylinder, that uh, the vacuum side of it is 40 millimeters, so I'm going to make a 40 millimeter circle. And then Q on the keyboard, select that face, and I know that I want to, that that's 4 millimeters thick, and so if I go that way, positive, then it's going to come out. If I go in that way, then it's going to cut inside. So I want to do negative 4 and hit enter. And now you can see that I've got a nice ring in there. So if I turn the second body back on, you can see that that's actually really close, except that lip right there. Uh, let me turn off body 1. So you can see that we've got that lip right there. So I want to eliminate that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come up here and modify, align, and select from here. So that's the first one, and move it to this face. So it moved it down. So if you're concerned at all, and I'm, I wasn't, if you're concerned all about the overall length of this uh, piece, then you would want to make sure because I just moved it. I just lost four millimeters of this overall length. So hit OK, turn the original body back on, and that's looking 
it's looking pretty good. The only problem is this is now three separate pieces. And uh, if I exported this, it would be three separate pieces. You could fix this in some slicers and stuff like that. But in order to make it just easier on ourselves, I want to make this one piece inside of Fusion. In order to do that, I'm going to click and drag to select everything, come up to modify, select combine, uh, make sure that join is selected, and hit OK. And now you can see that we only have one body. Took all three of those and actually made it one single piece. Um, and that's, you know, other than the fact that this is a little bit shorter in length, this is basically the exact same thing that I created earlier, and that's how I did it. And again, this was not the best way to draw this piece, and I'm sure that someone who is more adept at Fusion, and as I learn, uh, I'll find ways to make things faster and easier. But this is a you know sort of a one-off part, and again, it is the end result is completely functional. So the last thing to do in order to be able to print this uh, is to save the STL out so you can uh, import it into your slicing software of choice. So just right click on it, save as STL, defaults here are generally fine, hit OK, and name it uh, something that you would remember in a spot. I'm just going to save it to the desktop here. Now, okay, so I've switched over to Simplify 3D, um, which don't please don't take this as a... Um, endorsement of Simplify 3D. The, unfortunately, it's while it's a decent enough piece of software, as far as I'm concerned, the company that makes it uh, is just has their head, head up their butt um, uh, in some aspects, and that's unfortunate because it is a relatively decent piece of software, but I, I just I would probably stay away from it at this point and look at other alternatives. I just It's what I'm familiar with at the moment and haven't switched over to anything else, and I wanted to get this printed, so that's what I used. Anyway, I uh, just wanted to note that when you do print it, you want to uh, print with support, and this is probably over-aggressive on the support, but that's what it auto-generated, and that's what I went with. I printed a test version of this um, just to check for fitment. Um, I just had it print enough just so I could check to make sure that each end fitted, fitted? fit on the, uh, on the respective ends that it needed to, uh, and I forgot to have it generate support, and it printed, but there was some string uh, inside, um, which was okay, but um, it, I would just recommend adding support. Okay, so that's it for this video. I hope uh, you found this useful in some way. Again, this wasn't meant to be a complete soup to nuts um, tutorial on Fusion. It was just meant to show that even with just a little bit of knowledge and sort of just fumbling your way through, you can actually get to something useful inside of Fusion, at least when it comes to, to 3D printing. This is the only, this hose adapter is only the second thing that I've drawn up in, meaningful thing, useful thing that I've drawn up in, in Fusion. Um, this light bracket, which I'll talk about in, in a future video, is the second thing. And both, I mean, uh, other than maybe the threading in this and this uh, countersink, both very basic, nothing fancy going on, basic shapes. Um, super, super simple. To, to draw up and only requires a base level of knowledge. Again, if you want to really sort of, if you want to you know, sort of bootstrap uh, your knowledge in Fusion, uh, I suggest you check out those tutorials at a link in the description uh, by Lars Christensen. Excellent uh, beginner series on Fusion. Again, it's what I use to sort of get myself uh, going in Fusion, so I highly recommend that. Anyway, hope you found this useful. Uh, thanks for watching.